Peace be with you. Welcome back, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Jesus via Mary. The best, surest, and the quickest way to the sacred heart of Jesus is through his mother, the Blessed Virgin, the Immaculate Conception. She's our mother too. Mary, our mother. Let's begin with a prayer. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that any one who fled to your protection, implored your help, or sought your intercession was left unaided. Inspired with this confidence, we fly unto you, O Virgin of Virgins, our Mother. To you do we come, before you we stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, Despise not my petitions, but in your mercy, hear and answer them. Amen. Today, brothers and sisters, I'd like to begin by talking to you a little bit about Mary, the mother of Jesus, the mother of God. Mary was a young girl, probably only about 12 or 13 years old, when the angel Gabriel came to her and asked her to become the mother of the Son of God. She had recently become engaged to a carpenter named Joseph. Suddenly, her life would be changed forever. Mary was at first fearful and troubled in the presence of the angel. She could never have expected to hear the most incredible news, that she would have a child and her son would be the Messiah. Although she couldn't comprehend how she would conceive the Savior, because she had earlier made a pledge of her virginity to God, still she responded to God with belief and obedience. Although Mary's life held great honor, her calling would demand great suffering as well. Just as there is always pain in motherhood, there would be much pain in the privilege of being the mother of the Messiah. Mary was the mother of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. She was a willing servant. She trusted God, and she obeyed his call. The angel told Mary that she was highly favored by God. This phrase simply meant that she had been given much grace, or unmerited favor is another way to say it, that had been given to her from God. Even with God's favor, Mary would still suffer much. Though she would one day be highly honored as the mother of the Savior, God knew that Mary was a woman of rare strength and obedience. She was the only human being to be with Jesus throughout his entire life, from his birth until his death. She gave birth to him as her baby and watched him die as her Savior. Mary also knew the scriptures. When the angel appeared and told her the baby would be God's son, Mary replied, I am the servant of the Lord. May it be done unto me according to thy word. She knew the Old Testament prophecies about the coming Messiah. Mary was young, poor, and female. These qualities made her unsuitable in the eyes of her people to be used mightily by God. However, God looked upon the quality of her trust and obedience. He knew she would willingly serve God in one of the most important callings ever given to a human being. Just like Mary, God looks at our obedience and trust, usually not the qualifications that man might look upon. God will often choose and use the most unlikely choices. Mary must have known that her submission to God's plan would cost her. If nothing else, she knew she would be disgraced as an unwed mother. She must have thought that Joseph would divorce her, or worse yet, he might even have her put to death by stoning. Mary may not have considered the full extent of her future suffering. How could she? She may not have imagined the pain of watching her beloved child 
bear the weight of sin and die a terrible death on the cross. Still, she willingly submitted to God's plan. Can we willingly accept God's plan? Can we even rejoice in God's plan like Mary did, when we know that it will cost us dearly? Yes, Mary accepted God's plan, and she even rejoiced in them. And this is evident by her prayer, the Magnificat, which she said when she visited her cousin and cousin Elizabeth. Her cousin had said to her, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. When I heard your voice, the baby inside of me jumped for joy. This is a case of Mary bringing Jesus to the baby who would become John the Baptist so that Jesus could sanctify him in the womb of his mother. John the Baptist therefore was born without original sin but not conceived without it. Only Mary has that honor of having been conceived without original sin. Now back to the Magnificat which Mary said at that time. We learn a lot about Mary from the prayer that she says. Mary's prayer is not a sad prayer or a weak prayer. It's a joyful prayer, a prayer of trust and confidence that God will continue to be close to those who seek to do his will. Mary proclaims her prayer boldly, for she knows God more intimately than any other human being in history. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. Some people just radiate God's love. Their joy exceeds the bounds of this world. Mary was one of those people. In fact, she was one of those people personified. She did not have to be preachy because you sensed the presence of God just from meeting her. Lord, make my life more of a sign to the world of your love for all people. When I speak my words, serve to build up the body of Christ. For he has looked upon his servant in her lowliness, and all ages to come shall call me blessed. Why is Mary called blessed? Is it simply because she is the mother of the Savior? No. For when a woman from the crowd shouted, Blessed is the womb that bore you, Jesus said in reply, Blessed are they who hear my word and keep it. Mary received the word at Gabriel's invitation and kept it, no matter how hard life became. Help me, Lord, to be as open and receptive to your word as Mary was. Help me to be faithful to your world in good times and in bad. God who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. What had Mary done to merit the honor God was bestowing upon her? Mary shows us what real humility is about. It's not saying to yourself, how worthless I am. It's saying to yourself how great I am because of God's grace. A priest once told me that humility is not thinking less of yourself. It's simply thinking of yourself less. Lord, keep me from becoming so proud of myself that I forget the source of my accomplishments. But never let me get so down on myself that I think I'm not capable of doing good for you. He has shown the might of his arm, and he has confused the proud in their inmost thoughts. He has deposed the mighty from their thrones and raised the lowly to high places. The hungry he has given every good thing, while the rich he has sent empty away. That's the way God is. Mary knows that from experience. He takes a special interest in those who are without the basic necessities of life, who have no voice in the way things are decided, who don't count for much in the eyes of the world. Lord, 
Let my devotion to Mary always remind me of your concern for the poor and the lowly. Show me what I can do to help those in need. He has upheld Israel, his servant, ever mindful of his mercy, even as he promised our fathers, promised Abraham and his descendants forever. Mary knew that God fulfills his promises, but sometimes it's hard to wait. Sometimes I get anxious because things aren't happening as fast as I think they should. Lord, help me to live a life of waiting on you, as Mary did. Share with me some of Mary's patience and hope. And when my life is over, let me enjoy the fullness of your love in heaven forever. Mary was a woman of courage, and yet she had many sorrows in her life. There's an old saying, when the going gets tough, the tough get going. That's not a bad definition of the word courage. In spiritual terms, courage is simply grace under pressure. There are time and times in everyone's life that demand spiritual courage. Maybe it's illness or a problem child or a troubled relationship or failure or whatever. That's why Christians honor Mary for the courage she showed in all the painful circumstances of her life. People honor her as Our Lady of Sorrows. I prefer to call her Woman of Courage. Really, if anyone had a right to have things go her way, it was Mary of Nazareth. After all, she's the one who said yes to being the Mother of God. If anyone deserved God's special favor, it was Mary. But that's not the way it happened. Into Mary's life came sadness, sorrow, and pain. Heart-rending pain at that. Through the centuries, Christians have found inspiration in the seven sorrows of Mary. They call us to spiritual courage. One of the sorrows in Mary's life was Simeon's prophecy. When Mary and Joseph presented their newborn infant to the priest in the temple, Simeon said to Mary, A sword of sorrow will pierce your soul. No dispensation from pain and sorrow for Mary. None for me either. Mary's heartache gives new meaning to my own. The Flight into Egypt Hardly had Jesus been born when the Holy Family became refugees fleeing the wrath of King Herod. Mary and Joseph experienced all the pain and separation from relatives and friends. The loss in the temple, when Mary lost Jesus for three days. There was the time when the boy Jesus got separated from his parents and spent three days in the temple. Mary felt all the worry and anxiety that a mother could feel for her child. The carrying of the cross when Mary met Jesus along the Via Crucis. Imagine the pain and anguish when mother and son met on the way to Calvary. Mary's courage brought her there, and courage carried her through it. The Crucifixion If there was any faith left in a human heart at that terrible moment of our Lord's death, it was in the heart of Mary standing strong at the foot of the cross. As the body of Jesus was taken down from the cross, Mary did not collapse in tears or run from the scene. She stayed there because that's where she belonged. The burial of Jesus. In burying her son, Mary buried something of herself. Life had to go on, but it would never be the same again. Now here's a daily prayer to Mary's courage. It's not enough to think about Mary's courage just once in a while. Draw close to this woman of courage every day. Do it by reciting a special prayer known among the Marianists as the three o'clock prayer, but you can say it at any time. In drawing closer to the crucified Lord, you will also draw closer to our Blessed Mother. Mother. 